Today's show is pre recorded. Y'all know what time it is. Y'all don't know y'all better act. Hat on, hat on, suit on, suit on, looking like the trap dog, giving them all. Dress like a million bucks, but things in its cup. Mm-hmm. Y'all tell me who could it be? But Steve Harvey. Oh, yeah. They're listening to me. Mm-hmm. Put your hands together for Steve Harvey. Put your hands together. Oh, 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 oh. everybody you are listening to the voice come on dig me now one and only steve harvey man got a radio show how good is god huh think about it just take a slight inventory of your own life and say it to yourself when you get through how good is god huh think of all the small things all this because that's him you breathing that's him you still here that's him you got another chance that's him you ain't out of here that's him you got any measure of health that's him. You think there's more to it than it really is, than it already showed up to be? That's him. All of that. You got any dreams or aspirations? You dream of other things? That's him. All that. That's him. That's him. Them clothes you got? That's him. Every time you eat, that's why they had this thing called You Say Your Grace. That's him. See, that's him, man. That's him. It's, a, it's amazing when you take a small inventory, how you find out how big God really is in your life. Now, the more you turn yourself over to him, the bigger he can be for you. See, he'll only be as big as you let him. It's one thing about God. Now, he's a gentleman. He can make you do anything. You know, you get too big for him. You know, you 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 lose your humbleness. He can humble you now. God created man with the power of choice. We're the only creature he created that he gave us the total power of choice. When we mate, who we mate with, you know, everything, all of it, man. It's a choice. What we want to be, how much we want to make, where we want to live, what climate we want to live in. We can live in cold climates, hot climates. You know, we speak different languages. You can go learn another language. A bear can't do nothing but be a bear. He can't go learn how to be a fox. He can't go learn how to be an otter. He just can't. An ostrich is an ostrich, man. He can't come out here and fight like a lion. A lion is a lion. A lion eat meat. He can't eat vegetables. I don't care how much meat ain't around. He'll lay down and pull up out of here and die because he can't eat grass. He's just a lion, man. You understand this? That God gave us. We are the one creature he created that has total power of choice. You can make every decision in your life. What kind of watch you like? That's the one you can buy. You want to live in Switzerland. Go ahead. You don't like Switzerland? You can move to Miami. You want to live your life of crime? Go ahead. That's you. He gave you the power of choice. You want to do right? Come on. So now, look at this thing. We are all the results of a, of a series 
of decisions that we have made. If we could just identify that the problem is us, we could begin the solution. See, that's the problem, y'all. It's us. It's what we do. I threw my life down the hill. I can't tell you how many years based on some decisions that I was making. Now, I can justify my decision when I wasn't happy and I was doing this and I was in misery and y'all on that. Yeah, 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 Steve, when you get through, you made the decisions, though. And you can look at this any way you want to, y'all. But at the end of the day, I'm just talking to people that's really, really wanting to improve their position in life. And how do you do that? You got to have a solution. How do you come up with a solution? You got to identify the problem to even begin to solve it. But if the problem ain't ever you, how are you going to solve something that ain't you? See, Okay, let me look at it this way. If somebody say, like, I got a child of mine, man. I just do right here, man. I, I don't even want to get into it this morning. Boy, I'm struggling with this this boy. I, but, man, you, you go to people, you ask them why they do something. I just, I just wasn't taking care of business. Why? I just didn't take care of business. Boy, do you understand that your life is going to be filled with you got to take care of business? So when you going to start? You know, man, you can't, you can't, you you can't go through life blaming everybody. It's got to be you. See, you can fix you. You can't fix nobody else. If you keep getting married and the marriages don't work, hello, 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 could it be you? So I finally had to sit down and just make that decision. Ain't no need of me coming on the radio talking about nobody else and what they did to me and y'all just don't know. No, 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 man. What about the part you played in it? Because, see, if you got a good marriage, you got a part to play in that. If you got a bad one, you got a part to play in that. Even if it just get down to you the one picked them. How about that, Mr. Mister? I made a decision? The problem is usually within yourself. Do you know that's the quickest and easy way to fix your life? That way you ain't got to check with nobody. Here's the beauty of going on and admitting that it's you. You don't have to check or clear it with nobody to start the repair process. You don't need anybody's permission. You ain't got to put it before the review board to see if it'll pass. It ain't got to go through Congress. You ain't got to hope that your uh, local politician get their hands on it and make a phone call for you. You ain't got to ask any counselors to come in and sit with you. You don't have to check in the rehab. All you got to do is decide. The problem is me. I'm going to start changing me. Identify the problem and start with the part that you can own up to. Once you identify the problem, you can start planning on how to fix this or how to get to accomplishing something. But remember this planning is important. If you fail to plan, then please plan to fail. If you don't know how to make a plan, let's just start with the basics. Just make a list of what you want. Make this list and then go to God in prayer with an open mind. And open your mind up to all the clean opportunities that are available. Here's why a lot of people won't succeed. Because certain opportunities come along, you don't want to do them. That kills me, man, when I hear people, I ain't doing that. I know young comedians that come to me all the time talking about, man, what you not say, man, just take every gig you can. No matter what it pay, well, l l listen to me, son. You can go make that money that it pay, or you can make the decision to sit at home and make no money. It's a comedy hard business. They ain't paying but $100. You got to drive, drive 50 miles. But if you drive 50 miles and you make the 100 and you stand on that stage for 30 minutes, you are now 30 minutes better than you was the last time you went on stage. Oh, man, I, yeah, man, they don't pay me. I ain't coming. You ain't finna be a comedian, man. Not, 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 not like this here. A lot of people just don't want to do what's necessary to do. So when the opportunity presents itself and you open up your mind to it, man, then get ready to go on and do it, man. Identify your problem today. Start with the part. That's you.
You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, well, look, I know that I'm starting to sound redundant. I know. Steve, you say the same thing every day. I, I, I don't know what else to tell you. If you are not amazed time and time again by what God can do, you're not paying attention. I said it's a new day. Now, who you know can do that? I'm just asking. It ain't you. It ain't the weatherman. It, 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 it ain't NASA. It's him. And, and it show up every day when he say it's going to show up. That's what's crazy, man. Anyway. Yeah. Well, anyway. <laughs> here I go again. Being amazed. Incomplete and utter awe. That's that God, boy. I ain't playing around with you. This is Steve Harvey Morning Show. Shirley Strawberry, Carla Pharrell, Mississippi Monica Jr., and nephew Tommy, the legend that he is. Junior, uh, yeah. what's going on today? You know what, Unc? Let me tell you what's on my mind, Unc. You know, I appreciate you, man, because you know what? You don't, you don't never sound old to me. You don't even speak old. You don't do nothing old. You know, people around your age, like, you know, like my daddy partner, you know, they, they, when they talk, they got all these old ass saying, I can't follow the conversation. Everything you say, we understand pretty much everything you do. You don't, you don't hang out at old places. You don't do none of that. You just ain't old. What's yeah. old places? Taverns. <laughs> you know, like, taverns, you don't, you don't do nothing, you know, they all down large. <laughs> None of that. You know, you just do stuff that just makes sense. You know, like, I ain't understand what, what he was talking about. He looking at the cab, looking at a new gate. What does that mean? What is a cab doing looking at a new gate? And how do you know the cab looking at it? What is what is that mean? Like, what, they, is, what, what? Yeah, yeah. You know, Johnny told on the phone talking about, yeah, man, we was out there, man. It was something. We pulled up at that spot, man. We look like a cab looking at a new gate. What the hell do cabs looking at oh, new yeah. gates got to do with anything? I ain't never heard that before. I ain't never heard none of this old talk. Now, Junior, I'm going to tell you now. Old people know some stuff. I, I didn't say that. I ain't say that. Just say it so I can understand it with my young self. That's all I'm trying to get to. Mm. See, they're trying to grow you, Junior. They're trying to grow you. Okay. One in the hand, two in the bush. Who, who's in the bush? <laughs> a Who in there? It's a bird. It's a bird. It's a bird. In the hand is worth two in the bush. Right there. Didn't know. What, well, Junior, what that means is what you're holding. It might be two birds in that bush, but if you let this bird go to reach in there for the two in the bush and they fly out the bush, you ain't got nothing. A bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. Mm-hmm. But if it's two in there and I happen to catch both, wouldn't that be wouldn't that be better? See, key word in there was a small word with the smaller, the smallest words with the biggest consequences. If. Mm. If I rob this bank and if they don't catch me, I'm going to be rich. Man, okay. <laughs> <laughs> a whole lot of ifs sitting in prison today. Right. <laughs> okay. I get you. Like, hey, man, hey, man, like my dad you say, if going to get your ass whooped. <laughs> Coming up <laughs> at 32 minutes after the hour, we'll hear from the nephew as he runs that prank back right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for the nephew to run that prank back. Nephew, what do you have for us today? Uh, you can't come back to church. You just can't. You just, you just can't. We, we just don't want you here. You can't come back to church. Who can you do that to someone? Who we got to start. To? We got to. <laughs> We got to start doing that. We got to start it. You can't come back. Who are you to say that? You can't. You can't come back to church. And we're going to start. We're going to start weeding people out at the church. So we're going to start. We got this ATM out of the front. We want your ties when you walk in. That's what we <laughs> Swipe your card before you come in. That'll determine what kind of message you're going to get for the day. We're going to change up on that. You can't come back to church. Let's go, cat dog. Hello. Hello. I'm trying to reach Sister uh, Cherise Mayfield. Who is this? Deacon Bounds from the from the church. Deacon who? Bounds from the from what? From our church? Yes, yes, ma'am. Okay. From 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 here. Can you hear me good? This old phone don't work. We're, we're good. 
Yeah, my phone okay. Okay, that I called it. The deacon board didn't have a meeting as well as uh, pastor, mm -hmm. and uh, they didn't have a meeting. They come to the understanding that uh, they gonna ask you to not come to church right now because that about that them boys of yours, Eric and James, being in jail the way they is, and want to, want you to just uh, I don't know if they gonna suspend you from church right now, but they. Uh, they think it put a bad look on the church. My kids being in jail put a bad look on the church. Well, that's what that's, that's what they that's what they come up with. Now we didn't have a meeting with the deacon board and with Pastor Stoves. I don't understand why y'all have a me meeting about my kids in the church. Well, what I, my kids got to do with the church? Well, what we trying to do is show a good example to the youth that we got there. Okay, you can show a good example by me being there paying my tithes and offering. Well, that's another thing that's been brought to our attention that we're going to be calling a lot of members about is people not paying the tithes the way they're supposed to. I pay my tithes. I don't know. I don't know who told you that, Deacon Barnes. I don't even know, first of all, who you are, and I'm not trying to be mean to you. And I don't. I don't even understand why you how you even got my phone number. Well, now let's. But I pay my tithes. I pay my offering. Go on your computer at the church. Call your secretary or whoever. Well, let, let me and, let me let me ask you this, Sister Mayfield. Do you pay your tithes according to what you make? Yes, I do. Check the books. Well, well, well. Now, what it is that we can't check the books if we don't know exactly what you make is what I'm saying. What I make. It's my business between me and Jesus. I give him his 10%, and that's all Mars Hill need to know. I, I, I understand exactly where you come from, but now the, the main issue on the table is about these boys and, and, and being, uh, you know, disrupted the way they are. They don't want that to be, to, to, to bleed over into the youth choir. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, first of all, I would appreciate if you would have a pastor to tell me this himself. And then second of all, if somebody kids is having trouble in the world or whatever, y'all supposed to pray for them, not put them at the church or they mama. Well, I'm, I'm, uh, well, I'm, we going we gonna pray for, and we are gonna pray for you too. But we don't want this, this, this to shed over to the youth that we got that's doing good with this. Well, thing. I'm gonna keep coming. Y'all can't stop me from coming to the church. I'm gonna keep coming. So I don't know who you talking to, and you tell pastor to call me himself and tell me I'm I can't come to. Hill. And you have nobody calling me telling me that I can't come to Hill. That is a free church. I'm going to get the pastor called. Now they well, you get the pastor to call me because you have no business calling me telling me that I can't come to God's house. Well, Sister Mayfield, I don't want you to get in no hook roll with me. Now, I'm, I'm not getting. I'm not getting angry with nobody. I work. I don't work 18, 16 hours today. I don't have time for nobody calling me telling me that I can't come to a church that I pay my tithes and offering at. Not that I own the church. I pay my tithes because that's that's due to God. But y'all really making me upset by telling me I can't come there because of my kids and they troubles. Well, me, well, Sister Mayfield, where where was you this past Sunday? You what now? I wasn't at church because I had overstepped, and why is that any of your business? Now, there you go being in uproar with me again. I don't know who this is. How could you call somebody about church business over the phone? This don't make sense. Sister Mayfield. Hello? Yeah. One more thing. This nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show, <laughs> you just got pranked. I got you. I got you. I got you. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Wait a minute. How are you going to this time? Y'all are going to stop this <laughs> you know what I like about you, though. Right. What, ain't nobody going to keep you out the Lord's house. <laughs> you going to show up and show out every Sunday. Every Sunday. I'm coming to church <laughs> in the name of Jesus. I know that's right, baby. Well, thank you. <laughs> hey, hey, baby, let me ask you something. Uh -huh. What's the baddest radio show in the land? Now, do you even have to ask me that? The Steve Harvey morning <laughs> show, baby. <laughs> and there you have it. Right yeah. there. What? 
Yeah. Can't come oh, back. Oh, it's great getting Can't up front. What? What? <laughs> Can't do it. Yeah. Play too much. Play your, t- <laughs> your ties. You can come back. Mm-hmm. You don't. Yeah. Gotta pay your ties. Gotta pay them. Y'all pay y'all ties? It's like I've asked y'all that before. Yeah. You know, all this time. acting like you, are, you ain't a sinner, too, right. that you ain't included. <laughs> when you I sins my ties, time. I'm just saying. Mm. Well, 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 let me ask you something. You take 10% of your money and you send it somewhere? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, not, do. I don't know if it's 10%. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, mm. Uh, mm. Mm. I sense mine. Pass the key on. Pass the key on. Get mine. I sense it. Yeah. I, yeah, well. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Nathan. Have you sent your ties, Steve Harvey? Have you done it? <laughs> Huh? Coming Where up next, time? ask the CLO, our chief Not love officer, no Steve Harvey, in the building. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour in entertainment news, Trump can appeal the ruling to keep Fulton County DA Fonnie Willis on his corruption case. A 70-year-old man was caught in the act in front of a Popeyes. What? Paris Olympics organizers plan to pass out 300,000 condoms. And Miami PD has already arrested 274 spring breakers. That is all coming up. But right now, it is time to ask the CLO, our chief love officer, Steve Harvey. This one is from Shondalyn in Greensboro. Excuse me. Shondalyn says, I slept over at my boyfriend's house for the first time, and he had makeup remover wipes and lavender lotion. He said he uses both, but it has me wondering if he has lots of female company. Do men use such things? Is he up to? Well, he told you the truth. He uses both. Makeup Uh, remover is uh to remove makeup. He Uh told you that. Uh Now, that lavender Mm -hmm. lotion, he told you he used that too? Now, listen to me. You use makeup removers to remove makeup. Yeah, that's what it's for. Yeah, Uh I use them every day. But you're Every on TV. day. You're on Hello. TV. Your mm. man ain't on TV. I do too. <laughs> yeah. So you guys now, wear makeup on TV. Right. But he uh-huh. got to get that makeup off, though. He just told you. He uses both of them. So now, why are you writing us? Because he told you he used both of them. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And uh, it's on the packet makeup remover. <laughs> <laughs> Remove makeup. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, come on now. Next question, Shelly. He's Shirley. not on TV. All right. <clears throat> Shelly, what is wrong with you? I don't you know. You got allergies, baby? You need to take some uh, allergy medicine because <clears throat> that could be it because you do this all the time. In the morning, yeah. Since I've had this cold. <clears throat> Shirley, you do it all the time, baby. Just every day. You know? Okay. So, you might have allergies, baby. Just take you some Zyrtex or something. Okay. That's some flow okay. nays. Stick that thing in your nose and squirt it. Okay. Flow nays. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Steve and Dr. Tommy. Yeah. This one's from Mike in Tampa. He says, I've been with my girlfriend for two years and I love her, but the sex is trash. She's 80% perfect in ah. other ways, so I get sex from someone else that I like a lot. I want to get married soon. So do I marry for love or do I marry the woman with the good good? Well, what? dog, I'm going to tell you. Uh, that, yeah. See, that Come good, on, Mary good. Ben. <laughs> see, here's the deal, dog. That good good is is fleeting moments in the relationship. That's not going to keep you. Now, not you say you man. love your girl, but the sex is trash. Mm. So you have sex with a girl that you like a lot. Brother, you're in a, you're in a uh, it's mm-hmm. called a quandary. Mm-hmm. You're in a quandary. And I really can't help you with this right here. We've all been there. What? <laughs> I re- what I re- do you mean you can't It's a help simple him. question. Does he marry for love or does he marry the woman with the good good? With that good you, good? You have to marry for love. Then but you help then, him. But no, no. Because he's still going to need that good good. Got to do with it. <laughs> oh, goodness. With marriage? No, because if, if he's <laughs> already tipping on the girl and they ain't married. So when they get married, what you think gonna happen? You you don't you don't get married and and stop tipping. The only thing changes the day after you get married. I've said it a thousand times: is the appearance of your left hand third finger. 
it's still gonna be good to you the day you get married. Your memory, you don't get your memory, you don't get your memory erased at the wedding. Everything <laughs> ain't no clear out. This ain't no dish drive. But can't bad sex no. get better? Can he work yeah, with this woman that he loves? Yeah, that's a Can lot she of learn? work. That's a lot of work. <laughs> Marriage is work. A lot of work. Yeah. It can. Uh, it ain't gonna well, some people great. just ain't gifted at it. I, it's just some people, this just ain't what they do. It's not what she does. It yeah, just ain't what they do. They ain't committed to it. They ain't got no they, they ain't got no enjoyment attached to it. You know, you can, it's a give and take. You know, you ain't. Huh. <laughs> so you don't just feel like it. it. <sighs> do something, damn. So does he marry her or not? Or does he he wants to get married, so what should he well, do? Well, bro, with? you need to re you you need to rethink this. Cause you are you you having second thoughts about it and you ain't even married. So bro, you gotta rethink, just slow down. She may not be the one for you because sex is important. Good, He's good. with her. He's you been with already... her for two years. I don't care. <laughs> She's eighty percent perfect, he said. 80% perfect, and you are too, dog. You might not even be 80% perfect. Mm-hmm. Okay. But y'all can work on this sex thing, you know. That's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. I, I think so. I don't know, I don't know how to do it. I don't know how you bring it up, though, baby. You ain't up. <laughs> Your sex you just... is trash. He can't say that. <laughs> ah, I hate it. when you do that. Ah. You know. Shut up, Tommy. Nah. All right. Nah. Moving on nah. to Asia in Chattanooga. <laughs> Asia says, I had sex in my car after work. When I got home, I took a shower and my husband got in with me. I turned away from him because I didn't want him in the shower with me. Why do men think it's sexy to have sex in the shower? I hate it. What? Oh, the car cooled up. <laughs> <laughs> Lady, we, we can't help you with this. <laughs> he got in the shower with you because you his wife. He wants you. But you don't want him because you had sex outside in the car with somebody. She, Yeah, and she doesn't like to have sex in the shower, period. What, but didn't she have sex with somebody else? In the car, yeah. 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 In the car. With somebody else? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. After what? work. Yeah. What you want CLO to do? Location is key to her. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It, it really why? ain't got nothing to do with who it is. Yeah. Wow. Right. She wants to know why do you men like to have sex in the shower? That is her uh, question because she doesn't like it. Right. So why don't you just say, hey, hold up, hold up. Let me drive. Let's go outside and get in the car. <laughs> That's my place of choice. <laughs> I like this car, and and we need to put a um, a broom closet, a janitor closet in here. Cause them the places Why? I like. I like mine in the car mm-hmm. and in the broom closet. Uh-huh. Or or let's put a copier in the baby room so when the baby at school, I can climb up in here on this copier. Cause that's where I like it at. Wow. Okay. All right, man. Ms. This, that, if if you listen to these questions, man, we live in a different world, y'all. Yeah. Because it's people who write in letters and have really, really abnormal stuff that they just write in like it's normal. Yeah. I just yeah. had sex with this other man in the car, and then I'm in the shower before, and then my husband gonna get in there with me. I just turned away from him because I don't want that. Why me? I want to have sex in the car. Did you miss what you just said? Why do men think it's sexy? You gotta have sex in the shower. In the shower. What is Why do you think it's sexy to have it in the car? <laughs> the shower make more sense question? to me. <laughs> she, she don't have to mess up her hair in the car. Yeah. The shower. <laughs> wow. <laughs> shower is for washing. <laughs> shower is for showering. That's what she's saying. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Thank you, guys. Coming up next, it is some entertainment news right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. A week ago in Fulton County, Georgia, Judge Scott McAfee ruled that Fulton County DA Fonnie Willis 
could continue as the lead prosecutor in the case against Donald Trump, trying to undermine the presidential election in 2020. Well, on Wednesday, the same judge granted Trump and seven other co-defendants the right to an appeal of his ruling. The appeal would delay the scheduling of a trial date. So now it's highly unlikely that Trump will stand trial before the November presidential election. Hmm. Yeah, he do. He's doing that on purpose. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> yep. This is in lighter a travesty, news. Man. This is yeah. just yeah. a travesty. Yeah, Go yeah. Ahead. it really we'll is. Talk about it today. It really is. In lighter news, a 70-year-old man and a 44-year-old woman were caught having sex in front of a Popeye's restaurant in Vero Beach, Florida. Oh, that shit. Yeah, that marinade just for a minute. How old was he? <laughs> he was 70. She was 44. <laughs> What's in that chicken difference. got you doing it like that out in front of that probably? Fast. <laughs> Red beans and rice. <laughs> yeah. Shocked onlookers called 911 and police arrived to find the couple actively engaged in a sex act. Uh, police reported that the female reeked of alcohol and had to be restrained. Her 70 year old accomplice said she, he tried to have sex with her off to the side, but she wanted to do it right in front of Papa. Yeah. I tried to get her to come around on the side <laughs> of the building over there by that dumpster. And I told her, I said, we could drive over there. That, that'll limit exposure. She said, no, right here. What I supposed to do? <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's where it went down, right in front of Popeye's. They were both arrested for indecent exposure. What you in for? Mm. Uh-huh. Mm. Pop's Popeye's getting it in, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, those biscuits. <laughs> you be hungry, you know. You be hungry when you finish, you right? Eat. So it's convenient. Yes, yeah, convenient, right there. You got a real two piece. That's a real two piece, right there, honey. And a biscuit. Yeah, but when you get through though, you just need to go in there and get some drink. Don't eat, don't, don't, don't. don't bite in that big dry ass biscuit. I'm trying to. <laughs> <laughs> it's got that little powder dust on top of it too. Mm-hmm. All right. That's in uh, other news, you would think that athletes participating in this year's Summer Olympics in Paris would be tired from competing, but organizers expect there will be a lot of intimacy going on. Uh, maybe since Paris is called the city of love, who knows? But to make sure everyone will be playing it safe, Olympics organizers will have 300,000 condoms on hand for the Olympians. That's approximately two condoms <laughs> per athlete per day. Per day. Yeah, per athlete, Ooh. per day. Per day. Mm-hmm. Hey, we need to go see these Olympics, because <laughs> there's they're way gonna, more than events going on. <laughs> mm. uh. 300,000 condoms? That's a lot. So you, cause you know, because you know, they're they meeting people first. So you the pole vaulter. <laughs> You're right. Uh, what cut you, you from? Mm. All right. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Wow. wow. They getting busy, huh? That's a lot, yeah. I ain't here for no gold medal. I know that. <laughs> well, most of them know they ain't going to place no how. <laughs> yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. yeah. We ain't going to place no medal. It's 300,000. It ain't but three medals. Well, well what you want to do? <laughs> the odds, Steve, they look yeah. at the numbers. Because <laughs> once you compete and you don't make the cut, well, you there uh-huh. for two more weeks. Well, well, hey. <laughs> Two condoms per athlete per day. Wow. Wow. That's a lot. Mm. That is a whole lot. Hey, you're going to use your two lot. dog? Let me have your two dog. You ain't going to use it today. I got it. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> but do they have you the see? stamina? I know they're world-class athletes, but do they have the stamina to do all that's required Hell of them yeah, athletically? The this is the summer, uh, athlete, uh, uh, summer Olympics, baby. Uh-huh. Everybody out there running. Okay. So they do have yeah. the stamina, you're saying. So they okay. running, they swimming, they swimming jumping, and, and, uh, diving, uh, basketball. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, All right. Hurdles. With them synchronized tennis. swimmers, though, underwater. Hey, uh-huh. Them right there. Oh, they yeah, can they hold got... their breath, huh? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> 300,000. Okay. And finally, Miami authorities had the whole TV campaign uh, to keep spring breakers away from Miami. It was called the Spring Break Breakup, but some spring breakers decided to spend their week in Miami anyway, and 274 of them have been arrested. 
So far, for curfew violations, bag checks, DWI, DUIs, and traffic violations, Miami PD's public information officer emphasized that ensuring public safety is the primary concern for both guests and residents during spring break. Yeah, they're not. So playing. they're enforcing it. They sure yeah. bring breaks down, yeah. man. That's what they're doing. Yeah, they uh, out there fighting on the beach and all that. They're not having it. Yeah. They are it's not too crazy, having. man. And yeah. I'm going to tell you something, man. Other than spring break, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. people don't go to the beach to fight. <laughs> no. Nobody right. at all. That's where you go to chill and have fun. Yeah. Right. It's too much God right. out there. You got the ocean, you got the horizon, and yeah. you got that beach. Yeah. It's yeah. all nature out there. If you walk and and get grounded and, and, and hear that water, it's peaceful. Yes. You out there high. And all you looking at is the people. See, that's mm. the thing about nature. There is no devil in nature until you introduce people. Mm. Uh -huh. Miami said they're not having the devil this year. They're not having Farewell. it. Well, yeah. <laughs> Keep the devil yeah. over there. You're going to have to quit selling tickets to Miami. Because they yeah. coming. <laughs> you can break up with yeah, them if yeah, you want to. <laughs> and I got news for you. They already stay there. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> Coming up in 20 minutes. After the hour, Junior has a spring break poem for us. Oh, okay, Junior. <laughs> right yeah. after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, come on, Steve. Introduce Junior with his spring poem. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I thought we was through with this, but I see we're not, so here it is. What? Mm -hmm. I come on. affectionately call it J-Rap. <laughs> you will soon find out why I call it J-Rap. <laughs> what is that? J-Rap is an acronym for Junior's. Raggedy ass poem. Come on, thank you, thank you, Unc. Mm. You know, with all this stuff around spring break, you know where we gonna go and all this. Don't nobody know where we going, so I just thought we just talk about it in poetic form. That's all I did. And his this name of this poem, and I really thought this through, is called "Where Can Black People Go." That's that's pretty much the name of the poem. Where can black people go? Here mm. it is. Okay. Uh, Spring break is ruined for us this year. They said we can't go there, we can't go here. They don't want us in Miami no more. And it ain't safe for nobody to go to Mexico. We need the beach and a nice place to stay. Only place left for us are Destin, Galveston, and L.A. They saying the spring breakers are bad for business, so I guess my black ass will be home watching March Madness. The weather's warmer, that's for sure. So where the hell can black people go? I really don't care. I just wanted y'all to hear this poem today. The end. Wow. Uh -uh. <laughs> wow. I don't. I really don't know where, where black people can go. I'm not really even concerned. I'm just gonna watch some basketball. That's all I can tell you. I don't. You can't go to Miami. They already told you. You can't go to. Can't go to Mexico. We say time. How long it took you to put that one together? Oh, about three days. Three days. <laughs> you worked hard on that one, Junior, huh? I don't know what the hell. You were well, in the lab. You I was in the lab. Can y'all go to Miami, though? <laughs> no. Okay. Is it safe to go to Mexico? Uh-uh. No. Okay. Well, I, I had to put all that together. That'll take a lot of time. And you know what? It sounded to me like all you did was report the news. <laughs> Well, that was it part rhymed, of it. though. <laughs> that was part of it. But you know, the other thing about it, too, I don't know if y'all want to go to Galveston. I don't know if you want to go down there because, you know, you know. Galveston, I love Galveston. We, I love Galveston. We I do, too. I love don't it. go to spring break. Huh? You say what? We, up? we, we, what? we don't What's go this? to spring break. When the last time y'all been to spring break? Mm. Well, we, I, 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 we have to. So we take our kids. <laughs> kids, yeah. yeah. Different places for spring break. Mm. We did staycation this year. We ain't had no money, partner. <laughs> Where can black people go? Uh, <laughs> at home? Back at home. Three days. Three days. Watch some TV. That's it. <laughs> Can't go nowhere. Huh? I'm just saying. I'm just, Jim, I do you have a in. suggestion as to where people can go? Yeah, they back porch, huh? <laughs> staycation. <laughs> just grill. Barbecue. Back porch. Yeah. How you could be black and ain't never had a back porch? <laughs> oh, he's had one. Yeah, just I know yeah. All right. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Coming up next, Roscoe. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show.
All right, Carla, here we go. Your buddy Roscoe is in the building. Girl, yes, he is here. I'll stay ready. What's going on, everybody? Hey, Roscoe. <laughs> hey, hey, Julia. Hey, 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 Julia. I heard a poem. <laughs> Where can black people go? Boy, you need to stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, well, yeah, you you can't write a poem. You sure can't be no songwriter. You know what I mean? You got a war without a whole. All right, God, what you got for me today? Come on. Okay, you're not gonna believe this, Roscoe. So check this oh, out. You you the one ain't gonna believe it. Go, no, go, listen, go, listen go, to this. I don't know right. if you've heard about this. So okay. Erica Badu posted a picture of Beyonce and the message was to Jay-Z saying so you gonna let her copy my style so then Beyonce's publicist posted pictures of Beyonce rocking braids so Erica Badu is saying that Beyonce is kind of taking her style I think Erica Badu was playing it's good well, it's in jest yeah yeah I think she was playing but I think people are taking it too seriously so my question to you is <laughs> Have you ever been accused of stealing yeah. another singer's style? So, and did you have? Well, I don't know. You know, first of all, I don't know how that could be. What do you mean? <laughs> how I'm gonna get accused when I'm the creator? Uh -oh. Now I didn't have to accuse several people. Really? But you can't accuse me because I'm the creator. Okay, so I'm gonna throw out an artist, and you tell me. If there was some beef, the uh, beef or anything, Sugarfoot, the Ohio players. Oh hell no, hell no! I ain't never had no, I ain't, I ain't never had no beef with Sugarfoot. Me and Sugarfoot was good. Okay. You know, cause I knew his granddaddy. Who was his granddaddy? <laughs> Sugar Daddy. Yeah, of course. I knew Sugar Daddy. Then uh -huh. it was Sugar Baby. It was Sugar Daddy. Then his wife name was Sugar Baby, and then they had Sugarfoot. <laughs> so you cool with that family? Yeah, and then Sugarfoot baby, I know Sugarfoot baby because it was Sugar Daddy, Sugar Baby, Sugarfoot, and I know uh, Sugarfoot baby. Okay, okay. So then, what about Eddie LaBert? Sugarfoot baby named Diabetes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. I, I ain't want you to miss that. Okay. Ahead, what, All what, right. What? I got it. I got it. So what about Eddie LaBert? Any beef? Eddie LaBert? Hell no. Trouble with Eddie. Okay. Eddie, my man. That Cleo connection. Mm. Jay, Jay, Jay. <laughs> All that right there. Oh, no, 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 I ain't got no problem with them. See, you naming people I'm cool with. Okay. All them 70 players, I'm good with all of them. Because they give me credit. Okay. So uh, what about you? I wrote, want me I wrote Brandy. You wrote Brandy <laughs> by the OJs? Sitting by the open fireplace. <laughs> in my okay. favorite dungaree. Mm -hmm. Hummed a few balls of a melody. It sounded sweet to me. Thought I'd get up, take a look around. But my feet got in the way. Mm -hmm. She was Just right in the door. I could see her face. Mm. Just because you know the lyrics don't mean you wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> did you write it? No, I didn't write it. I didn't say I did. <clears throat> you see claiming... that difference between me and you. You ain't say you did. I say I did. <laughs> See, I know what I done. You know what you didn't do. See, that did put me you. Now, Junior, that's a poem right there. You should, you should wrote that down. Because that's One prophetic right there, what I that's did. That's prophetic. Do. prophetic. Yeah. One more time, Roscoe. No, yeah. Shirley, I don't repeat Junior. <laughs> well, you know, you're Go talking ahead, but you're talking to Junior. You know, poetry is kind of like songwriting. Junior don't know how to write no poem. <laughs> <laughs> you heard that poem good. right there? Yeah, no, that poem was break. obvious. I write yeah. songs about things you don't know nothing about. Well, do us a song about spring break then. Give us one right off the top since you're a songwriter. Come on. Literally. Hitting down south by myself. But I'm going to wind up with somebody else. Hey, going down just to get it on. But I might come back with something on my own. Oh, they just spreading it all around. You're going to have a disease in this here town. Prank oh, coming up next. Spring. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show.
Coming up at about four minutes after the hour, it's my strawberry letter, and the subject is, he's late on his payments. Hmm. We'll get into that, find out what that's all about in just a few. But first, the nephew is here with today's prank phone call, which you got for us, Nath. Let me ask you, are we allowed to tell people their kids are too fat? Are we allowed? Is that, can you say that? Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, you can think? say things. Yeah. There's just going to be consequences. Yeah. And repercussions, and repercussions for it, but you can say it. You okay. can say it and see what happens. Well, let's go and get it on there. Your son is too fat. Your son <laughs> is too fat. He is. <laughs> what? I told you about that. You play the boy too, much. too fat, Shirley. That's all it is to it. Let's go, cat dog. Wow. Your son is too fat. <laughs> Hello? Hello, I'm trying to reach Kathy, please. Um, this is her. Hi, Kathy. This is Kirby. I'm actually the um the owner at the daycare, <laughs> Mines Daycare, where your son comes. Okay. All right. I'm sure you are familiar with my wife, Benita. Yes, sir. All right. How you doing today? I'm good. Oh, how's our, our little, little Devon? How's he doing? He's good. He's laying down taking a nap. Okay, you guys been coming here, I guess, about a year now, right? Yeah, since he was one. Okay, listen, I wanted to give you a call. I'm looking at some some information. How is how is Devon doing at home? Is he is he eating properly at home? When you say eating, what do you mean? I mean, is like he getting is he getting uh, 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 meals every time he's supposed to get them while he's at home? Yeah. He, he he eats. He's doing pretty good. Okay. Now, there's, there's, there's no situation where you guys may be a, a shortage of food or anything like that, are you? Uh, wait a minute. Shortage of food? No, sir. My husband works real good. We don't have a problem with a shortage of food. Is there a problem with him? Well, you know, we're, we're looking at the records, and, and Lil Devon is two. Yes, sir. Have you looked at the comparison of, of two-year-olds? The majority of two-year-olds in, in comparison to, I, I guess I should say size, in comparison to, to Devon's size? You mean like in body weight, body size? Yeah, I mean, he's a little tall. You know, he wasn't a small child when he was born. He was 10 pounds. But, no, he's on the scale of right where he should be. He's just a little, you know, taller because his daddy is tall. But he's doing Okay, he's are, are you, so you, you're, you don't think he's anywhere in the, in the ballpark of, 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 of obesity? At two, you mean fat? I mean, I didn't want to be blunt, but 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 Miss Kathy, you're. I mean, I mean, your son's. A, a... I, l- l- let me just say, on a Sunday, I'm relaxing, and we talking about. You think my son is a, a little overweight, or or what? He's what's the problem? I, well, I, I, I mean, I I I think he's fat, you know, and and, and the problem I'm having you think here he's is. Fat. I'm noticing the records of everything as Wait, 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 wait. We need to back up to you think he's fat. I've never spoken to you. Mr. Kirby, is that what you said? My name is Kirby. Okay, so every morning that I drop him off for a year and I give my daycare money, Miss Benita has never said anything about his eating habits. So you're telling me that you think my son is fat? Do you deal with him? Do you deal with him on a daily basis? I don't deal with him on a daily basis. What I'm looking at is records that are showing me that he's eating way more than the rest of anybody at the daycare and not only that he's drinking probably a gallon of milk a day a so, gallon of milk y'all only get snacks two times a day and he's there only for breakfast and lunch and how in the hell is he drinking a gallon of milk and if he I, is drinking I, I, a gallon I, I, of milk I, I, do I'm you need me away to a gallon? This, ma'am, but all i know is this no no i'm blown away by this because you calling me on a sunday calling my damn child fat that's the problem and your wife has never said a damn thing never has she said one thing to me in a year when she collected my damn daycare money she ain't said my son is eating y'all at a house and home Okay, well, you know, my wife's a different person, and she tries to be cordial with everyone. Well, she's the uh, one who deals with me, Mr. Kirby. I've never met you. Never met you. Especially all of a Sunday. Well, the reason why I'm calling you on a Sunday, ma'am, is that I know tomorrow if I, you're going to be trying to drop your son off. Oh, so, I am going to drop him off. I no, am no, going to no, drop no. him off. No, no, no. That's, that's kind of the reason why I'm calling you. Now, here's what, what we can mean? do. There's what two do alternatives mean? here. Either you can keep him at home. No, I'm not keeping him at home. My husband works, and I work. I'm dropping my damn son off at 630 like I do every morning. Okay, ma'am, 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 listen. If, no, if, if, if we can't get him un, uh, at, at the regular week You might want to get Ms. Benita to on this phone at... because obviously you ain't the one that needs to be talking to me. Because if you're not there every day and I deal with your wife. Ma'am, I'm telling you that your son is too big to be. And, he's too and big. his family. 
is coming every morning if that's the case. And if he's eating at a house and a home, I send him some extra. But what I pay my money for is what you're going to feed him for. Two full meals and two snacks. And if he needs extra, I'll put some in his bag. But he's drinking a gallon of milk a day. Are I you don't care. To... I don't care. There's no way possible that he can drink a gallon of milk a day. Okay. Y'all Ma'am, here's, here's, here's the deal. I don't want you to have to stop bringing your son there. And I'm not. Here's, and I'm not. Here's my second alternative. I will put him on a diet, okay? I'll give him an apple in the day. You ain't no damn doctor. Gonna, you ain't, are you from the health food program? Ma'am, I will, I will give him an apple and a glass of water in the morning, and I'll give him an apple and a glass of water in the evening, and then you guys can feed him when he gets home. You must be certified in the food program, especially if you sitting up here telling me my damn son is going on a diet, and he's not drinking no water and no apple, he needs a full snack. If the other kids is having an apple and water, then that's what you better be serving him. But if that ain't the case, then hell no, he better get the full snack. So if that's graham crackers and apple juice, well, damn it, that's what my son better be getting. And if he want extra, he better get it. Ma'am, listen, all I'm trying to tell you is your son drink too much it, He, he it, drinks what, too whoa, much whoa, milk whoa, on, whoa, a day, whoa. on a daily basis. Whoa, 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 whoa. You need to back the I know you did not cuss at me. I, I know you I, I did not cuss at you. No. I caught myself. You I'm trying to got ready to cuss at me. Let me tell you one thing. You ain't got to worry about it. We don't have nothing else to talk about. My husband, me, your wife, and every everybody that works at that damn daycare better be there in the morning because at 630, we going to be there. And my son, he's coming all week, and he going to eat all week. If he want two gallons of milk, he gonna drink it. If he want two plates of food, he gonna get it. Because I tell you what, we pay damn good money to come to that daycare. So, Ma'am, son, let, me, let me explain something. You're gonna bring your child up there, then I'm gonna have to put him on some Slim Fast. Now, I, I will put your child on Slim Fast. I was trying not to Give go to this perspective, but I will. Fast. Give him some Slim Fast and you gonna get a Slim Fast whooping. I'm gonna whoop your and whoever gave it to him. Whoever gave it to him. They gonna get a Slim Fast whooping. All them little kids better have some slim fast. If he getting some, he better eat whatever they eating. If they eating steak, well, damn it, he better have some, too. If we had steak, he'd probably eat the whole damn cow. Well, he I don't too. care. I'll pay for it, but he better not get no slim fast. I will shut it the down about my child. Okay, I got something else you need to know about your son. What the else do I need to know besides you think my son is overweight? What the else can you tell me today? I need to tell you this. I need to tell you that this is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Your girlfriend, Lucretia, got me to prank phone call you. What the f*** did you just say? <laughs> what the f*** did you just say? <laughs> this is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Your girlfriend, Lucretia, got me to prank phone call you. I'm going to beat that <laughs> to death. She know I don't play about my damn son. <laughs> At all. That's my only son. I don't play about him. I'm going to be there. Is she there? Is no, she, she's can not she here, hear me? Baby. It's on after this. It's on. It's on? It is on. <laughs> all right. Hey, I got one more thing I got to ask you, baby. What is? What is the baddest, and I mean the baddest, radio show in the land? <laughs> the Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> it's on. I'm whooping <laughs> It's on. I hope you can hear me. Wherever you at laughing, it's on. <laughs> We ain't got enough food at these daycares to, to feed all. You, you, your son eating way too much. He eating way more Whoa. than the rest of these kids. Wow. Yeah. Keep on here. I'm messing with people's kids. Y'all got to feed this much. baby at home. It's too much. He just come in here. Ooh, ooh, he doing too much. He eating a lot. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> you wrong for that. Uh -huh. He eating a lot. I will be in Montgomery, Alabama. That would be March the 30th, Saturday night at the Montgomery Performing Arts Center. Tickets on sale right now to see celebrity, the comedian, J.J. Williamson and Earthquake Shaking It Up, hosted by yours truly, Nephew Tommy. Tickets on sale right now. All right, Nephew, thank you. Coming up next, Strawberry Letter. The subject is, he's late on his payments. We'll get into that, find out what that's all about right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is now time for the Strawberry Letter, and if you need advice on relationships, work, sex, parenting, and more, please submit your Strawberry Letter to steveharveyfm.com and click Submit Strawberry Letter. We could be reading your letter live on the air, just like we're going to read this one right here, right now, and you never know, it could be yours. It could be yours. Buckle up and hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is. Strawberry letter. Thank you, nephew. Subject, he's late on his payments. 
Um, Dear Stephen Shirley, I think my husband is cheating on me. I found out after a woman called me and said my husband was late on her car payment. She said they've been having sex for almost a year and bought her a car. He bought her a car for her birthday last August. She said that she started dating another man in October and my husband got mad and said he would take the car away from her. She said she kept dating her boyfriend, but she was still sleeping with my husband. She said my husband harassed her and he put a boot on her car. After that, he stopped paying her car note. I did a lot of snooping and found out that my husband did electronic transfers for three months to a bank in South Carolina. The woman sent me a picture of the car with the South Carolina tag. I told my husband that his side chick called me and told me everything. He said she's one of his older college students that he advised years years ago. He said he did help her get a car because she's a single mom and she needed to get to and from work. He said he got the car from an old friend in South Carolina that owed him a favor. He told the woman he would pay the first three payments, and then she was on her own. I went to bed that night with a pounding headache because there's too many lies to get through. This woman was definitely one of my, one of his former students, so my husband told the truth about that. The rest is crazy confusing. I called the woman back to see if my husband had reached back out to her. She said he came and took the car. He told me that the bank took it. Would he buy her a car without sex being involved? <laughs> Uh, I don't think so. I, I really don't. Because if sex wasn't involved, what was all the secrecy about? Why didn't he just tell you? I mean, he obviously didn't want you to know he was sleeping with her or that he bought her a car. And I do agree with you. There are a lot of lies in this letter, but you definitely need to focus on what the woman told you. She said she'd been sleeping with your husband for almost a year. Your husband admitted to buying her a car, didn't he? Well, uh, is he such just a nice person that he just goes out and just buys single women cars out of the goodness of his heart with no strings attached and, and not tell you his wife? Uh, uh, the math isn't mathing right here. I don't think so. I think he was sleeping with her. I think he bought it a car, just like she said, for her birthday and agreed to pay the notes. But when he found out that she had another man, he got mad and stopped paying the note. And the car got repossessed. I mean, married men can be very possessive and territorial. They can have a wife, but they don't want you to have anyone in your life. He never thought she would call you. He never thought she would tell you anything. She has no car now, so she's mad. And she called you to get back at your husband. So what do you do with this, this information? You, first of all, you need to stop calling her. You need to deal with your husband, uh, who you think is cheating. And please don't expect him to admit that he was sleeping with her. That's not going to happen. Steve? This boy in this letter is outstanding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hats off. You know, if you want to do a lesson on how to do it, <laughs> if you need a lesson in how it's done, <laughs> this dude in this letter right here, I can't tell you. He made you proud. Boy, I, you know, <laughs> I, it, boy. Are you tearing up go. here? Are I, you I'm tearing emotional. Up? <laughs> you First are. of all, this letter has everything in it I need <laughs> to side with this man because of his effort. So I'm going to just show you how I go. Now, I ain't picking a side. You pick what you want to do. But I'm going to show you the expertise in which this man handled this letter. This lady says, Dear Stephen Shirley, I think my husband is cheating on me. You know what? After all this happened and she started writing this letter, she still don't know. Mm -hmm. Which means this man has done an outstanding job <laughs> of covering all the bases. She opened the letter with, I think my husband is cheating on me. That means there is doubt. Mm -hmm. And that's all we need. <laughs> I found out after a woman called me and said my husband was late on her car payments. Hmm. She said they've been having sex for almost a year. He bought a car for a birthday last August. She said she started dating another man in October. My husband got mad and said he'd take the car away from her. She kept dating the boyfriend, but she was still sleeping with my husband. She said my husband harassed her, and he put a boot on her car. Let's stop right there. Mm -hmm. Where he get the boot from? Boots is city property. Where he get a boot from? 
So therefore, we have our first crack in the concrete. Where would I get a boot from? How I'm going to put a boot on your car? (laughs) See this man right here? Oh, this is outstanding. And so anyway, I found out that my husband did electronic transfers for three months to a bank in South Carolina. The woman sent me a picture of the car with a South Carolina tag. I told my husband his side chick called me and told me everything. He said she is one of his older college students that he advised years ago. And he said he did help her get a car because she's a single mom and she needed to get to and from work. He said he got the car from an old friend in South Carolina, owed him a favor. He told the woman he paid the first three months and she was on her own. This is outstanding. <laughs> Girl, this is excellent. When we come back, right here is where this letter, just right here, is where this boy right here just made me just stand up and go, my God. Lord have mercy. All right. Hang on, Steve. Coming up at 23 minutes after the hour, uh, <laughs> we'll have part two of Steve's response coming up. And uh, today's Strawberry Letter subject is he's late on his payments. We'll get back into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, come on, Steve. Let's recap today's Strawberry Letter. The subject, he's late on his payments. I can't wait. The woman who wrote in and said that uh, uh, that she got a call from, first of all, she said, I think my husband is cheating, which lets us know that there is some doubt in this letter. And I'm going to tell you why the doubt is, because the man has set the hook in this thing right here. So good. I'm so proud of him. He was just outstanding in <laughs> every move. That. I, I, he couldn't have made no better moves right here. I couldn't have done it better myself. I'm just, it's amazing how he, <laughs> on the, the way he was thinking on his feet. Uh, she said, uh, she got a call from a lady, said her husband was late on her car payments. Said they've been having sex for almost a year and he bought a car for her birthday last August. And he started dating another man in October. My husband got mad, said to take the car away from him. She kept dating the boyfriend, was still sleeping with the husband. Said your husband harassed her and he put a boot on his car. Now, this is the first crack in the concrete because where he get a boot from? Uh, boots is city property. I don't even know where. You can't go to where no boat, buy no damn boot. Amazon. You get no boot on Amazon. <laughs> Amazon. <laughs> you get everything. But how did he get to South Carolina and put a boot on the car? And why would he put a boot on the car for what, though? What do that do? Now, I did a lot of uh, snooping and found out my husband did electronic transfers for three months to a bank in South Carolina. Mm -hmm. The woman sent me a picture of the car with South Carolina tag. I told my husband that his side chick called me. This is where the letter get good. His side chick called me and told me everything. He said she one of his older college students that advised years ago. He said he did help her get a car because she a single mom and she need to get to and from work. He said he got the car from an old friend in South Carolina, owed him a favor. He told the woman he would pay the first three months and then she was on her own. Boy, boy, <laughs> come through. <laughs> boy, this boy come through. You talking Don't about thinking deep. on his feet. Now, Amazon, you can get a boot on Amazon. Carla just showed me. <laughs> Something like it. <laughs> but, but, but see, all he got to do is put this doubt in here. Where I'm going to get a boot right. from? Mm-hmm. How mm-hmm. I'm going to put a boot on the car? He said he helped her get a car. So, see, this is what the, the brilliance of this. Yes, I did help her get a car. So, just in case you're snooping and you found these three transfers, I'm telling you I helped her get a car because she's a single mom and she needs to get back and forth. I was her college advisor. Mm-hmm. I have cared for this young person for all this time and I could not stop caring. And I told her I'd pay for the first three months and then she was on her own. Well, guess what? You, She said that he stopped paying. Well, guess what? I don't know if you told him that information or you just said she told him everything. He said, I stopped paying after three months, said she was on her own. I went to bed that night with a pounding headache because too many lies to get through. (laughs) Oh, you went to bed with the pounding headache because of the confusion that was created. Mm -hmm. Confusion creates doubt. Mm. Doubt is the opening line in this letter. I Mm -hmm. think my husband is cheating. This woman was definitely one of his former students. Uh-oh, Uh-oh. another crack in the sidewalk. 
So you mean to tell me he done told you that he told her three months? So now you got three bank transfers. He got three months story behind it, three payments. Then you find out that it was one of his former students. This man is telling enough truths. He got That's enough I... truths going in here mm-hmm. to make the lies believable. Yeah. The you expertise said... of this is just amazing to me. That's why you're so proud of him. The rest that... is crazy confusing. Yeah. I called the woman I... back to see if my husband had reached back out to her. She said he came and took the car. Hmm. He told me the bank took it. Come on, boy. <laughs> Come on, boy. Why would he buy a show. car without sex being involved? Hmm. Because why would you be a college advisor? Ain't no sex involved in being a college advisor. I'm here to help the youth of our tomorrow. <laughs> you said there was so much conviction. Get out of here. Yeah. She ain't got no daddy. Mm. She ain't got no man. She a single mother. Oh. I was just helping her get through a difficult He's time. So nice. Now it has backfired on me. Out of the goodness of my heart. Oh, he's such a caring person. Yes, he <laughs> is. Yes, he he's is. So sweet. And Aww. therefore, I must side with him. Because he has cast (laughs) doubt on the letter writer. The letter writer, first line in the letter is, Mm -hmm. Stephen Shirley, I think my husband is cheating on me. (laughs) Well, I can see how you think that. But didn't you say later on in the bed, later on in the letter, that you went to bed with a pounding headache? She said it. Mm -hmm. Because it was too many lies to get through? Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. But if it was enough, it was enough truths in there to hold you. All he right, did buy the car. He did pay it for three months. She is supposed to be on her own. He he. She is a former college student of his. Leave Lord your comments mercy. on today's Please. strawberry letter on Instagram at, probably at Steve Harvey FM. That damn car. <laughs> and check us out on the Strawberry Letter <laughs> podcast. On the free iHeart no! Radio app, where free never sounded so good. Coming up Come next through. is Junior and Sports Talk right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for Junior and Sports Talk. What you got, Junior? Well, Draymond Green back in the news again. Golly, come on, Draymond into another what do stuff. Yeah, what do you do now? What do you always do, Tommy? You don't do nothing else but fight now. Scrap. <laughs> Scrap. Well, Risen ball. Risen yeah. ball. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, he got into it with the Grizzlies, uh, Desmond Bain, and then he ended up knocking over the head coach on accident. So he say, the head coach of the Grizzlies is on the ground and Draymond is taking on everybody. You know, uh, I don't know what all this counseling for. He talks the counseling, the suspensions. You know, Ain't nothing work. Counseling ain't for everybody. He is not. He for went it. out there because the league told him to go down there. Yeah, but he knew he wasn't gonna change though. You, you get into it with him, he's gonna fight back. He know he need. He don't need. I don't see why everybody worrying about Draymond. This what he do. <laughs> like, like, like you don't know he was step on the court. <laughs> no, that's what Bill Lambert did. That's what Rick Mahone did. He a scrapper. He a scrapper. Never that's what Meta good. World did. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Coaching and giving the, the pregame speech, Draymond ain't listening to none of it. I don't care what you say. If they touch me, I'm taking on the whole team. Now, y'all can be with me or you're not. I'm not supposed to sit here looking talk about rally, you know, rebound. I'm rebounding. I'm not in here doing defense. I'm here to fight. The best defense is fighting. That's all Draymond feel like. Sitting up here, I'll take these suspensions. He don't care nothing about it. Just, you know, just just watch out. If you playing, if you playing Draymond them tonight, if y'all got a game with him tonight, just leave him alone. Quit talking to him. Is he suspended? Ah, uh, no, he probably not yet. Uh, we ain't heard nothing yet. But he, he may be, you know, just, you know, just an incident. You know, he mm. said it was an accident knocking the coach over. But he's, you know, it's an accident well, every time. Well, the game, Junior. Oh, uh, 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 I didn't even get to this goal. It was the fight. Forget the score. The fight is all we know is Draymond. Mm. <laughs> if it's Draymond, that's all we need to know. But all I know is this, Unc. We got some games tonight, Unc, for in the March Madness. Just tell me who you got, Unc, if you think it's going to happen. You got Houston and Longwood. Number one versus number 16. Houston should beat Longwood. 
All right, uh, this the one. Grambling playing Purdue tonight. Grambling going to whoop Purdue ass. Yeah. Come on, GSU. That's what I'm saying. Yes. <laughs> hey. Come on, Tigers. Number four, Duke taking on number 13, Vermont. It's going to be a couple surprises. It's too many I'm scared surprises. of Vermont. All right, uh, here we go. Number seven, Florida taking on number 10, Colorado. Oh, yeah, I saw Colorado. Florida, Florida, Florida got some hoopers down there. Number two, Marquette taking on number 15, Western Kentucky. Marquette, Pat. Fan always have this. Stick with them. All right. Thank you, Junior. Coming up at the top of the hour, a woman's ex sister in law betrayed her trust. So, Steve, she needs some advice from you right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right. This is from Anonymous in Cherry Hill. Anonymous says, I'm a 34 year old divorced woman. My sister, my ex sister in law, and I were close, so I trusted her when she said she was hooking me up with a really special guy. The guy took me to dinner and then we went to his house. Things got heated and I, I lost myself in the moment and we tried to have sex. It didn't work out. Big fella was too much for me. I was ashamed in more ways than one, and he promised to keep it between us. As soon as I got home, my ex-sister-in-law called me laughing hysterically. Then she told my ex-husband, and he DM'd me and called me a garden tool. I am not a garden tool. It had been six months that I ha- since I had had sex, so I needed it. How could she betray my trust? Do I accept her apology or cut her out of my life? Mm. Well, when when a person shows you who they are, you have to believe them. First of all, the dude told your sister-in-law she can't handle. All this kissing and telling. She started laughing. She told her brother, I tried to hook her up. I see why you left her. She can't handle it. He called her a grot garden tool. See, lady, you first of all, your sister in law go hook you up with somebody. That don't even sound right. No. Ex sister in law. Her brother. Her brother. Mm-hmm. Man, lady, you got to learn the rules. You, you ain't been out there in the dating game in a minute. It didn't change now. It didn't change now. These, these people love to humiliate, they like likes and clicks. Hmm. Take your that- time. Six Ooh. months ain't that long. Yeah. Cause sit your ass as down a man, somewhere. though, as a as man, a, right? The kissing man. and telling. Yeah. What's all that about? Uh, I told y'all these dudes is different now. Man. They cut from a different piece of cloth. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They on podcast talking about other men. They cut yeah, from a different and women. cloth. Yes. They gossipy. They just just like a bunch of mm. all these. A lot of dudes out here now. I, I'm just gonna tell you, man. They they just cut different. They they different, man. They a bunch of they're a bunch of little bees, man. That's all. Just a bunch of little bees. Mm. Big boy in there bringing it, though. Wow. Big boy in there clown. No, no, no. No, big boy ain't do nothing. See, he ain't get a chance to. But he want to brag now because he, he, he won't make everybody think he all that. Yeah, right. he humiliated Why he humiliated her. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was terrible. That's terrible. <sighs> anyway. <clears throat> all right, we have time for another one, Steve. I have seen one... a lot of big boats sink. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All that talking about the size of your boat, the Titanic went down too. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right, this one's from Zena and Shelby, Steve. Zena says, I'm married to a very jealous and insecure man. I was pulling in from work and my husband's buddy stopped at the end of the driveway to speak. He had his five month old in the back seat, so I went to see the baby. My husband drove up as I was standing at his buddy's car and I walked in the house and let them talk. My husband had the nerve to ask me what would have happened with me and his friend if he hadn't come home when he did. I've ignored him for four days. How could he insinuate that? Do I owe him an explanation? Well, you didn't tell him you was talking to the baby in the back seat? If you know your husband is jealous, do you owe him an explanation? You could at least just say, hold up, fool, with your (laughs) stupid behind. Yo, yo, he came up, pulled up behind. I went out there to speak to him because the baby was in the back seat at five months. Mm-hmm. I was back there playing with the baby. You drive up. He's your damn friend. <laughs> now, right. <laughs> now, is, is, is he your friend or ain't he? 
Mm-hmm. And I'm your wife. Now, am I not your wife or am I not? Well, what you want to do? Mm-hmm. See, you got to turn it on these people. You can't let them mm-hmm. keep it on you. That's what I do. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what? I bet they can't be leaning over no man car. There. You yeah. can't be leaning over no man car. No, that's a rule that my man. Man, I heard my daddy say that. I implemented that rules with my daughters. That dude came up and blew the horn one time. Woo! Oh, no, 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 no. No. <laughs> toot, toot. Yeah, that oh, was no. the rule in our house. All right. <laughs> Coming up in 20 minutes after the hour, we'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Well, Steve, tonight tonight's the night. Mega Millions jackpot is up to nine hundred and seventy-seven million dollars. Mm. No tickets matched all six numbers for Tuesday's drawing, so tonight is your chance to win really, really big. So, have you guys purchased your tickets already? Don't you pick numbers awesome. between something and something? What's the numbers? One and sixty, I think. I yeah, let me numbers. let me let me see if oh, I, I got my. Cards in here. Let me see. <laughs> <laughs> you already bought you yours, going, Carla. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> see, this one, this particular one's went up to sixty nine on the ones I picked on the quick pick. But I don't mm-hmm. know how high it goes. You think eighty? Why you got some numbers in mind? Yeah. Well, why are you asking? Like, why are you asking this? Yeah. Uh, I, I really got my whole future in mind. I went at nine hundred. <laughs> I laid on the line with these numbers. Boy, let me tell you something. <laughs> Mr. Billion. Oh, Lord. Yeah, mm-hmm. it'll be let over. Let me tell billion. you something. Sure. I don't care what the buyout number is. Get here. <laughs> yeah. It'll you be big, me. though, with this amount of money. Four people, just so you'll know, four people won $1 million each in California, Texas, Virginia, and Florida. Oh, so. from the other jackpot yeah, from, from the other uh-huh. night. Mm-hmm. So they got a cool Tuesday's drawing. Cool million. I take mm-hmm. it. I take it. That was cool. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not mad at that. At yeah. All. No. All right. All right. We'll have more of the Steve Harvey what? Morning Show coming up at 33 minutes after the yeah. hour. We'll play a round of Would You Rather right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for a round of Would You Rather. When you lie, would you rather a sharp pain in your butt or would you rather your nose bleed? Which one? When you lie. Oof. I don't want the nose bleed. I guess a pain in my butt. I'm going to take that sharp pain in the butt. Yeah, sharp pain. I'm just going to stay bloody. I'm telling you, yes. your nose. <laughs> I ain't going to go work nothing. All right. Hell, I lie on Family Feud. Huh? (laughs) For no reason? You're just lying? Well, you know, you got a lot of them people. Oh, you look nice today. (laughs) Nosebleed. And they don't? Steve, we made these outfits just for you. (laughs) Nosebleed. Right. What was the family you're, you're, on that last week? The white family? Uh, they, uh, they emailed each other, told each other to wear green. You know how hard it is to match green? Mm, That's like yeah. saying wear gray. Gray, yeah. So many shades. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah it's gray. It's a hard color yeah. to match. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You, you got to be safe. You got to get black. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. That on black. Black or yeah. white. You say white, everybody got to come in there. Yeah. All right. Would you rather take 10 toddlers Easter egg hunting or would you rather take five dogs to a dog park? <laughs> That's funny. 10 babies Easter egg hunting or five dogs to a dark park. Which yeah, one? I would take them five dogs on down to that park and walk off. Leave the dog. dog. You can't do that. Well, that's why I'm good because I watch them babies, but I'm not watching no damn dogs. I'm going to eat the dog. I'm going to eat the dog. I got here two, three days without seeing bear. (laughs) (laughs) Don't you miss him? No. (laughs) What kind of dog owner are you? (laughs) He's a dog. He is people, Carla. He is people. I love dogs. Yeah, I do too. Mm. Some people, you know, right. make them part of their family. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we're moving on. Uh, would you rather wear? Would you rather wear a dreadlock wig all summer, or would you rather wear a full fake beard? Which one? 
Yeah. They're not going to really be them. If I got no damn dreadlocks. <laughs> I'd love to see it, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take the dreadlocks. That's what I'm going to do. Dreads. Yeah. Yeah, that beard going to get hot. That, boy, that wig, that dreads going to get yeah. hot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but I ain't got no hairline, so this is more hair. Oh, oh you finally cool. admitted it, Joe? Yeah. Oh, I've been admit that. Oh, oh the dreads, we gonna start them where Stevie Wonder's is. <laughs> 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 All right, last one. <laughs> What's your rap? Cause what you're not gonna do is do your own hairline jokes and think we just gonna let it go. <laughs> well, I'm just, I've never heard of y'all that. No, no, no. We're going to put them on there for you, Junior. You can <laughs> just sit over there looking like Stevie. <laughs> <laughs> That's today's round of Would You Rather. Coming up in 49 minutes after, uh, it's our last break of the day, and we'll have some closing remarks from the one and only Steve Harvey right after this. They're going to beat us today. Beat y'all right uh-huh. to it. No, the uh-huh. hell you not. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Here we are, guys. Last break of the day on this Friday. Don't forget tonight to watch Ready to Love with the nephew. It's at 8, 7 Central on OWN. That's okay. right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's so good now. <laughs> they meet the parents. I just, I just don't like to self eliminate. That's the only part that bothers me. No. That's yeah. the only part that bothers me. And that was you my girl, too. She really when you want to bail out, I don't like that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if she don't want to do it, you gonna make it. You got to stay. <laughs> yeah, but don't be a quitter. Hang on. Don't be a quitter. Right Until that. the end. Yeah. Oh. Yep. But anyway, congratulations. Hey, Steve, before we get out of here, we did have one more uh, question for you. This is from Neil, or, or Nell, I should say, in Hawthorne. Nell says, I'm 74 years old and my boyfriend is 75. He's making extra money by taking people to the store or to doctor's appointments. He rides women around, too, and I don't like it, and he knows it. Should I give him an ultimatum, or should I trust him? What did you say? He's 75. He's 75. What is well, she's 74. He's, it's a jitney. It's jitney service. He take people yeah. around and he take people to the store and he take women and you don't like it. And so what? You don't like it. And that ain't your boy. He's 75 years old. He's your boyfriend. What the hell you do with a boyfriend at 75? <laughs> they got a date. Date? Yeah. yeah. I mean. But I used to, man, you, what you, you, you can't tell this man what to do. He's 75. He making <laughs> extra she's money. 74. He what? making extra money. He ain't mm-hmm. asking you for no money. This man out here making extra money, taking his car, taking people who can't get around, taking them places for money. He not going to stop doing that for what? Because you don't like it. Now, y'all sitting up at the house, ain't got no yeah. money, go nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> By your old ass by yourself now. Transpo. No, hell no. <laughs> Leave that man alone. Quit trying to run somebody. Why are you by yourself now? Mm. She, he's her man. This is her boyfriend. Her last husband, crazy. She tried to cheat on Hell yeah. Oh, you guys. <laughs> you wrong, wrong for that. To, no, I'm wrong, wrong for that. Yeah. This man out here trying to make extra money. He take people to the doctor and to the store. Some of them women. Hell, everybody sick ain't. Everybody old ain't a man. <laughs> Women need rides too. He got a ride, so he a damn kid. <laughs> Should she go with him? Should she go with him? No, stay out the way all out of people's business. She's in the way the, now. That's his the girlfriend. The man is making extra money. You the girlfriend when I get through working. So if it was the other way around, uh, y'all feel the same? Of course well, not. <laughs> but it ain't the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> Tell her to be careful because we live in a crazy world. You're picking people up. One of these men strong on you and all this here. Uh-huh. But you know, no. It, it, it ain't the other way around. The man trying to make extra money. Mm-hmm. She said he making extra money. Mm-hmm. I love yeah. that. Right. Taking people to the store and to the doctor. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's crazy. You know how you feel. Oh, Who's gonna be at they with if they get married? Ain't nobody gonna be. They're families well, and friends. friends. Yeah. Well, he gonna have to go. He gonna have to go pick kids. everybody, everybody up. Everybody up. <laughs> 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 See that was serious. It's hard to be there. Hey, be down a little bit. I'm picking up Esther and Paul. 
<laughs> nothing wrong with it. I like the fact that they're still active. He's still doing things for people and he can get around and drive and all of that. Hey, hey make up cool. your mind, Shirley. Make Pretty up cool. your mind. Make what? up your mind. My mind is made up. I do like that fact. He's 75. He can still do a lot of stuff. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Driving and all of that. But she want him to stay home. She just get doesn't on. like for him to drive other women around. Yeah. That's what well, how did women going to get where they did? Jealous. Jealous. Did yeah. you see the movie Driving Miss Daisy? The what whole does that have to with do? With Morgan Freeman? Yes, I did. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> he was driving her place. Was they having an affair? No. No. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> no. I think it's pretty you don't good. know that. It's pretty good service because, you know, he got handicap parking. He up front. You know, you go on in there, you come out the doctor's office, I'll be right here when you come on out. <laughs> the errands are quick. You got right good parking. You got good parking. I just need that paper. Thank you. Hey, I, I got doctor appointment. He got appointment booking and everything. Yeah. <laughs> and that work. Yeah. He's dropping people off at doctors. Instead of sitting there, he make a couple short runs, come back, be right there. Mm. If she's eight, what's she going to do? <laughs> you know them old people ain't got no Uber app. <laughs> no. So if he went out to the doctor and he making another short run, you just gonna wait at the doctor till he get there. All you gotta do is hope he don't forget. Yes. <laughs> but if he forget, then he ain't got his money. So I'm I'm assuming the dude is kind of sharp. Yeah, that's yeah, like what it. I'm saying. I like that. He got that. him a little business on the hustle. Surely make up your exactly. mind. You were saying a minute ago that he got to consider his girlfriend's feelings. I can say both things, though. I like the fact that he can do these things at 75, that he's still cool, he's That's sharp, cool. he can drive around. But you she could be jealous, to too. That, you just don't want to pick yeah. up the ladies, though. Yeah. You know, this, this. See, that's she called could be talking jealous loud too. and saying nothing. No, no, you can't. Stop being jealous about stupid stuff. No. Now, when you need your glasses fixed and your prescription picked up, and then he got the money, now nah. what? Mm. He better do it. Mm. Yeah, go get it and yeah. what? come on back. <laughs> see, you gonna see you and me standing in that line at that cafeteria, you're going to be wanting that blue plate special. With that extra dessert. <laughs> and what you think he going to do? He going to have the money? <laughs> <laughs> Is 75 that old? Wow. 75, yeah, that's old, baby. That's AARP. You, <laughs> hey, Gab, you met some regular 75 year old people? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that ain't Robert De Niro Neal. <laughs> <laughs> Having babies and stuff, huh? Yeah, that ain't really high, you know. <laughs> y'all have a great day, y'all. Talk to God and absolutely love to hear from you. Y'all say in peace. For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary, void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 